You have to imagine a ship so powerful it could bring an entire nation to its knees. For me, the Bismarck was the Death Star. It was a kind of mechanized warfare that hopefully will never exist again. It was this monstrous piece of steel that held together no matter what the British could throw at it. And when it finally sank, it became a legend with the same kind of force in the human imagination that Titanic had. Okay, so this is the next issue of The Build of Bismarck by Hatche Pat Park 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 Hatache Hat Tat Build of Bismarck. This is the next issue of The Build of Bismarck. Today we're going to be building the first gun turret of the Bismarck gun Anton. There was four main gun turrets on board Bismarck, and they were A, B, C, D, Anton, Bruno, Caesar, Dora. That was the German phonetic, phonetic alphabet. Uh, we have our own phonetic alphabet in the military. You know, we have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, all that. But the Germans have their own phonetic alphabet. They chose the German ones with really German names. <laughs> so, yes. But we're doing Gun Anton today of the Builder Bismarck. The very front gun, as we can see here on my 1-1000 scale model. That gun there. I got my tea ready, so we should be all okay. But first, let's have a look at the issue. What's inside the issue and what's in store for us? So obviously in issue three, we've got part of the hull, the bottom of the hull from the bow, and we've got an Addo Air Sea Reconnaissance Plane. That Bismarck had several of these. So yeah, Reconnaissance Plane, which was gonna be used to send the stuff back to Germany, but the bloody catapult didn't work. Sorry, that's behalf of HMS Prince of Wales. My girl did that. So yes, obviously it talks about the guns, putting the gun together, gun Anton, putting it all together, putting the bows in, putting the motor in, and then finishing the gun finally. So that's all we're just getting, we're just getting the gun. Now the thing about gun Anton is that she was different than all the other guns on Bismarck. Because if you notice, if you take a look, and let's have a look at Dr. Robert Bollard's book on Bismarck. As we can see, this is what she supposedly looked like when she went out, but I think she had her Baltic camo. Some people also speculate that her guns were in fact yellow as well. Um, because of more of the warships, one of the camouflages are yellow. And some people have drawn pictures of Bismarck's final battle and she has yellow turrets. Um, but I prefer the whole, you know, the black top turrets with the grey parts at the side. Very similar on my 1-1000 scale Bismarck, because that's what I think that she had as all evidence suggests. So yeah, but anyway, about Gun Anton is that she had, she was different than the other guns because she didn't have side range finders. These are side range finders on the gun here. And here. So these pointing out your bits of the turret, that's what they were. Do we have another picture? Here. But Anton didn't have these. The reason why she didn't have these was because during early sea trials, they found out that, in fact, Anton ran into a lot of bloody problems, is that seawater affected her front gun, because obviously the bow would be plowing forward at full speed, and so obviously the waves would cause problems for her forward gun, Anton. But not for Bruno, or not for Caesar, not for Dora, so they removed the side rangefinders off her forward gun. But yeah. So anyway. And it talks about Bismarck going to Norway. Another shot of Bismarck from the bow. And this was her in Norway, I believe. No, it's not. <laughs> but what happened was that Operation Rheinberg. I'll talk a bit about it. We all know about the operation. Operation Rheinberg was when uh, 
Hitler wanted, he wanted the surface fleet of the Kriegsmarine to interfere with the merchant shipping of Britain, our country. He wanted to starve us out of the war. And the U-boats under Admiral Donitz were performing fantastically. They were sinking quite a lot. And the main admiral in charge of the fleet, Admiral Raider, uh, he wanted, you know, he was pressured into getting results. It'll be like, we need results. And Raider knew that if you had one ship in a convoy, it would just completely destroy the entire convoy. It'd be a lot better than a submarine if one ship got to an entire convoy. It could sink an entire convoy and run. A perfect example was Admiral Shear, I believe, which managed to sink 1,000, no, 147,000 tons of shipping over that amount in one single mission, which is quite phenomenal for a ship to sink that much. But yeah, but what happened was that that's why Operation Rheinberg happened, and Luchens, the commander, even though he's seen in St. Bismarck as being this Nazi sympathizer and all oh, it's great and all that, he knew there was a problem. He said, I need Skarnhorst or I need Neisnow or Turpitz or another ship for this to work. It won't work with just two ships. And Raider was like, no, we need results now. So we have to do it. And he kind of did know he was going to die. Luchens, he kind of did suspect it. So he was actually, as I said, I'm a Luchens fan, so it might be a bit biased. Not a Lindemann fan. So yeah. And here's another picture of Bismarck in the fjord in Norway with her Baltic camo, as we can see, her Baltic stripes. Apparently they were painted over her Baltic stripes. I'm not exactly sure whether they were, but I don't know. <laughs> and this is the guy in charge, the man I was speaking about before, Admiral Gunther Luchens, who was an admiral. He has such a beautiful smile. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Apparently he never smiled, he never laughed, he never, you know. He was a bit of an introvert, apparently. He wore an iron mask. He was known as a man with the iron mask because he didn't smile. He was hated among the crew members. People liked the captain, Captain Linderman, but they despised Luchens because of the way he was. Typical German. <laughs> but I really am a fan of Luchens, so screw you. <laughs> if you're against him. Luchens and Linderman, they were like, okay, what should we do? Okay, we'll go for the Denmark Strait, because Luchens already went and sorted. He went through the Denmark Strait with Sharnos and Eisenhower previously, and he did a massive amount of damage with... <laughs> that's a lot of damage. He did a massive amount of damage with those two vessels, and so that's what he did. He opted for that option, but the Navy knew he was going to choose that option, and so they scared their ships, and that was when the infamous HMS Hood and Prince of Wales was positioned right on the edge of the Denmark Strait right at the end. So this talks about Legend of the Warship, the battleship, this little thing they talk about in this. It talks about everything essentially about the battleship and how it is and how they were out of service by the end of 1940s. This was that battleship before, was the Reichelu, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, she might be the Jean Bart. She is the Reichelu. Actually, some people think is equal or better to Bismarck. They're wrong. French navies are awful. Maser Kale Beer, thank you very much. You, the Royal Navy, we do not regret it. Now, um, <laughs> and this here is the victory, not the victory day parade, the day when Japan surrendered. And that was really the end of battleships. They were used in the Korean War and Operation Desert Storm and yada, 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 and the Gulf War and the Vietnam War. You and Jersey was, but... By the end of the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, they were taken out of service, and that was that. However, there was that one time off Hawaii where they did fight against that alien ship, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> so anyway, it talks about famous marine battle, the Lepan Teo in the shadow of the half moon, Greek battle against the Ottoman Empire. I don't know. I don't do ancient naval history. Ancient naval history sucks, and that's what it's about. <laughs> so yeah. That's what it talks about. So let's get this turret open and start working on Anton. All right, so that is gun Anton taken out of the packaging. Um, I made two horrible mistakes. Number one is that I've lost my sprue cutter. I don't know where the hell it went. It disappeared. It went and got Thanos clicked and it's disappeared. It like the ninth army is just gone. <laughs> and also this kit requires screwdrivers and I even though my dad's a sewing machine engineer, I, I can't find any screwdrivers. <laughs> so we're kind of screwed. But we'll keep going ahead. Right, so first things first, we need to get 
these off the sprues somehow without my sprue cutter. We'll find a way. We always do. We're British. This is our country. This is now. We will win. Let's get these off. Right, so it just took me into 25 minutes to get one of these off the sprue, file it down and put it into the hole here on the turret housing. As we can see, bloody irritating. It takes so long to do, but it's all about quality at the end of the day. So yeah, 25 minutes, bloody hell. Now we've got to do the other one. Great. Alright, so the second one was a lot easier and quicker to do, and I did more of a clean cut on it. Uh, it took me forever. I'm trying not... Jesus. Uh, it's that small. I dropped one of them, the previous one, and it, I, I, I almost lost it. Crap. I almost lost it. I was worried for a sec. Um, let me just get that zoom sorted. Nope. Oh, bit too close. But as you can see, <coughs> that there, I've had to do a lot of filing with it. In fact, it still needs to be filed a bit. Uh, yeah, it still needs to be filed a bit. It doesn't matter because that part is going to be inside the turret hole housing, as you can see here. So I've got to put it in there, and then it should look like that. All right, I, oh, all right, I filed it down, and now we're going to glue it in. So this is when I get my cocktail stick. And, uh, cocktail stick? Is it a cocktail stick? I don't know. Get my cocktail stick and my glue. So I'm just gonna put it in. This is harder than it looks, especially with the camera. Oh, I don't want to get it outside. I don't want any of it outside. So I'm just gonna put a bit of it in. I think I got some outside. Let me just give a look at that. So if I'm just using the camera. Nope, that's all good. Right, now I can put this in. So what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna. <laughs> this is harder than it looks. I'm gonna do it off camera, but you know I'm gonna put it in. And there we go. It's in. It looks nice enough. It's partially due to detail. I want this model to look the best it does. I don't want it to look hideous. So these are ventilators to the turret to inside the housing of the turret, as we can see. So these are the ventilators. Next up, what we're gonna put in. We've got to put in the ladders at the side of the turrets. I need to close my lid because it's not its going to dry up otherwise because it's already starting to dry up. So that's what we're going to do next. So these ladders are absolute tiny. I believe they're metal. I'm not sure. Right, I'm just going to... Alright, this is going to... I'm just going to get everything out. So we'll get out the gun out. Get out the motor. Very careful with the motor. I don't know how sturdy it is. Looks good, the motor. Get out this. Get out this. Get out the barrels. Get out. Barrels out. I believe these are metal. Oh my god, they are. <laughs> oh, this is going to be made out of bloody metal. Got my little mini battleship. Alright, so it turns out that these ladders just pop into place pretty much. You don't have to glue them in. Pop into place. Mmm, not happy about that detailing, <laughs> but I'll have to do, just, can I straighten it out? Looks good, let's do it with the other one. That's why, that's why you don't force them in, if I'd forced them in, it would have broken. Don't force them in, keep it nice, tight. There we go, that one's in, both in, that turret's looking nice. Detail on that looks fab. So yeah. Next up, what we've got to put on is that we've got to put on, I've got all these components out and just move them about. Next up, we've got the friction clutch. The gun barrels. And I've got to glue the gun barrels, these barrels, to this. So let's give it a go. All right, so that's one of the 15 inch barrels put in, one of the 15 inch guns. I give my gun sizes in inches, naval gun sizes in inches, because I'm used to calling them in inches. Um, I don't call them in centimeters or millimeters because I don't really like it. You know, 
it's much easier to differentiate the hinted the fifth to tell the difference between a naval gun judging by the inches so the king george fifth class battleships had 14 inch which was smaller than the usual 15 inch class um guns that the bismarck had and hms had had and war spy and common battleships had uh, but her guns were able to faster well they were designed to fire at a faster rate than the enemy ships as well as the ingeniousness of the king george fifth class is that due to their size and their you know they had a very good roll capability and luckily not a single king george fifth class battleship was sunk don't go there just don't just accept it don't go there but yeah but the biggest guns, well, actually, we had a naval warship which had an 18-inch gun. But the biggest is the 18.1-inch gun. I have to always say 0.1 because Yamato did have 18.1-inch guns. On board Yamato, yes. And her guns were apparently that big enough that they could make the abyssals go poi, poi, poi. You had to do it, didn't you? Yes. So let's get this gun barrel on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my cocktail stick and my glue. Right. And I'm going to slowly, surely... In there, oh, careful. Put it in, wiggle it around, make sure it spreads everywhere nice and evenly. Yeah, yeah, just rub it in, just give it a nice hot rub. Yeah, yeah, boy. And we're gonna get this gun barrel, I'll tell you the great way. We're gonna slowly, yeah, man. There we go. Now we need to align these guns because these are awful. They're out of alignment. So what we're going to do. So that's what it looks like. So what we're going to do now. I haven't glued it in. No, it's not glued in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this. And I'm going to get the tension spring, which is this. So hopefully the gun shoots backwards. And I'm going to put it in together. Like so. There we go. And what we're going to do then, is that we're going to put this here, and we're going to feed it, feed the barrels through. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to take this motor mount and we're going to put it in here. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to flip it over and put the screws inside. So screw this motor mounting in place into the cradle base plate, as that's what it's called. And hopefully the gun should be secured inside. So finally, after over a week of waiting, I've been able to um, get these screws into the um, part. I forgot. It's been a while since I've done it. So I've got the screws in. Using this screwdriver, I had to wait over a week to be able to do this. And now my time is of the essence even now as I'm recording this. So yes. And the next bit, what we're going to do is that we're going to insert the motor, which I've got here into the back of the clutch and the things. <laughs> I completely forgot what all this stuff is called, so we're gonna put it in. Now what it needs to do is not going in. So the motor fits in perfectly like that. As we can see, it's attached to that bit there. <laughs> Board cables and something, clutch shaft, something like, I, I don't know. And what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna put this on top facing that way we have a couple of screws so hopefully it holds everything into place fingers crossed you can see part of its motor is out the back here and part of the clutch shaft whatever the thingy magic is <laughs> is um yeah <laughs> basically now whoever said this is easy you're wrong this this ain't easy for me <laughs> Must be an easy version of this kit. So now what we need to do is that we need to get the housing on the turret like this. And we need to essentially shove this. So we flip this over. And we're going to put this through here like so. We need to put the other turret in as well. So that sits inside like that. And what's going to happen is that hopefully these go here. And voila. That goes in like that. That's looking nice. So we're gonna just we're gonna next stage is that we're gonna put this housing ooh over here like so. So we've got this all looking fine and dandy. Okay, that looks good. We can re-glue the turret. 
And now what we need to do is that we need to put the rest of these screws with the screwdriver into there. So I've inserted um, six screws into the housing, the underneath of the housing of the gun turret. Um, here, 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 and the same with the other side, here, here, and here. Uh, they're a bit painful uh, to do. I don't know if the cracking noise is good or bad, uh, but it looks like it's quite well. And so that is gun Anton finished the forward gun of the Bismarck. As you can see, the gun can, in fact, go up and down the gun barrels, which I find quite cool. And I think this gun should be able to rotate as well. I'm not sure, we need to get up to motor and find out. But yeah, <clears throat> so that's issue two of the Build Bismarck done. With the gun Anton. If I haven't mentioned before, they named their guns A, B, C, D, the Germans. Well, A going from to Z, whilst us British, we went we went A, B for the front ones, and C, D, and E, F, G, and all that. And for the back ones, we worked down from Z, Y, X. So yeah, <laughs> just wanted to put that out. <laughs> That's that done. In the next issue, we have, in issue three, we have the lower part of the hull of Bismarck of the front, the very front, <laughs> and we've got an Ardero Air Reconnaissance plane. Um, I think Bismarck had about six of these, just everyone tears me apart, no, there was about three, you stupid boy, sorry. I think she had three actually, <laughs> anyway, all these reconnaissance aircraft. Um, this was quite key to it before the last battle, as what happened was that um, a lot of the um, stuff the reports and the films of the Battle of Denmark Strait and all that of Bismarck and all these secret documents and letters home were put inside the reconnaissance aircraft and the reconnaissance aircraft was going to take off but the problem was that the catapult broke due to HMS Prince of Wales being a really good battleship and really underrated and everyone slags off Prince of Wales and Prince of Wales is one of the greatest battleships of all time and you can fight me over it. But, um, yeah, and so what happens is that they have to throw the air reconnaissance aircraft overboard. So that's going to be an interesting build. It's probably going to be a fiddly little one, which I'm going to tear my hair out because cause it's harder than it looks. So, yeah, so that has been issue two of the Build a, Bar Build -a, Build -a Bismarck series. Um, this looks good, the gun. The gun looks really good. Um, the fact that this is done in one issue, you know, it's not part of the gun. It's a whole gun, essentially. Um, in one issue, so yeah. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, peace out, my